Oi Cave Boy, Chapter 9. A quick recap of where we're up to. Previously in the story, Iggy had managed to find the plant that he needed, but with the help of a no neck called Crack. Um, but no neck had turned nasty, and now Crack and his army wanted Iggy and Hubba to show them back to the valley. Meanwhile, in Chapter 8, Borg had managed to sneak and his way into the chief's cave and left there a sack and that sack contained a scorpion and the scorpion was walking up the chief's body. Chapter 9 Hubba tries to think of a plan. Iggy picked his way over the stony ground. He'd never felt so weary. The no-necks marched like an army in a hurry. They seemed to be able to cover miles at a time without talking, eating or stopping to admire the view. And now and then Crack would halt and point his spear to the north or west, saying, Honga, which seemed to mean which way. He had no idea which way, for all he knew was they were hopelessly lost but he thought it wiser not to mention this. From what he could gather, the Nonecks were a nomadic tribe who moved from place to place. Right now they were looking for a winter home, and the Valley of the Irks, they felt, would suit them perfectly. Crack had long been searching for the land beyond the river that his grandfather had talked about, a place where the sky was always blue and berries grew on trees. It made no difference to him that the valley belonged to another tribe. If there was one thing no necks loved, it was fighting battles. Hubba drew alongside Iggy. Listen, he said. Can you hear it? Iggy listened and heard a faint rumbling. It could be thunder, it could be a stomach. Over the rise of the hill, they caught sight of it. The river! Icky felt he'd never seen anything as beautiful in his whole life. If this was the River Irk, then maybe they were getting close to home. Although it didn't look much like his own valley. Here the river rushed and swelled over the rocks in a white torrent. The river that Icky knew barely wibbled. One thing was certain, they would need to find a safer place to cross. Crack was barking August orders to his men. We rest now, he told Iggy. Eat, sleep. Tomorrow you take us to Valley of Urk. Iggy said nothing. He longed to be home, but he wasn't keen to arrive with an army of no necks in tow. He needed to think of something. A plan, for instance. Crack had sat down against a log to watch his men set up camp. Iggy went over to join him. Don't you miss home? he asked. Home? The marshes. Crack wrinkled his nose. Marsh, no good. Mud, cold, fog, fish. Fish? said Iggy. Always fish. Fish for breakfast. Fish for lunch. Fish for Supper. He spat on the grass in disgust. Belly of Urk, much better. Better place for no necks. It, it, it might not be, said Iggy. Yes, you tell crack. Nice big caves to sleep. Plenty hunt, plenty good meat. <sighs> Listen, about that, said Iggy. I may have told a few... Fibs? Crack's face darkened. What is flibs? You know, made it up, told some lies. He didn't see where the axe came from, but he felt its blade pressed against his throat. You made flibs? Crack, cut out your tongue. Good? 
Iggy nodded. Good, he croaked. Crack released it and went over to inspect the fire his men were building. That went well then, said Hubba, flopping down on the grass. Iggy rested his chin on his arms. Sorry, this is all my fault, he sighed. What is? Everything. Coming to the farlands, getting captured, everything. You look where it's got us. We're leading an army back home so they can wipe out our whole tribe. Hubba patted him on the arm. You'll think of something. Iggy squinted at the sun glinting on the river far below. We have to warn them, he said. We have to escape, find our way home and warn them. See, I said you'd think of something, Hubba grinned. Yes, but how? How do we escape when we're wa they're watching us all the time? Hubba chewed on a stalk of grass, thinking. We could always disguise ourselves. As what? Spiders, said Hubba. That'd be best, see, because they're probably scared of spiders. Hmm, said Iggy. I don't think that's going to work. Hubba shrugged and went back to thinking. All right. How's this? He said. We lie low and wait for a storm. A proper big one. And then? Then we all get struck by lightning. Iggy thought that if Hubba came up with many more ideas, he might have to throttle him. The log they were sitting against shifted as he leaned back. Taking a closer look, Iggy saw it was hollow inside and crawling with centipedes, yet the bottom half seemed solid enough. Hubba, said Iggy, you remember that scoot board we made? Yeah. Maybe we can do better. The sun had sunk behind the trees. Iggy glanced over at the Nonex gathered round the fire. A hunting party had returned with a young deer, which was now roasting on a spit. Iggy noticed that their guards had been edging closer to the fire, anxious not to miss their share of supper. Right, he whispered. When I say now, jump on. Hubba nodded. Just then there was a howl of dismay as the meat fell off the spit and into the hot flames. The Nonex leapt around, all shouting at once and trying to rescue their supper without burning their fingers. The guards had turned their backs. It was now or never. Go, cried Iggy. Hubba looked at him. You mean go now? Yes, now, do it! Hubba jumped on the front of the log while Iggy pushed off from behind. It started to bump down the steep grassy slope as he jumped on. Suddenly they were hurtling downhill like a two-man toboggan. Iggy hung on for dear life. It was faster than the stone scoot board, maybe because the grass was wet and the hill alarmingly steep. The log hit a bump and for a few seconds they were airborne, landing with a thud that almost split the log in two. Behind, Iggy could hear the angry shouts of the Nonex, who had just noticed their prisoners were escaping. He glanced over his shoulder and saw them racing down the hill. One of them lost his footing and went tumbling head over hills. The sp a spear hummed through the air and Iggy ducked as it buried itself in the ground. The next moment the sky was raining spears. But Iggy didn't look back. He was staring over Hubba's shoulder at what lay ahead. They were hurtling towards the foamy white torrent of the river. Hold on, he cried. We're going to... Yeah! The log took off like a flying turnip and hit the river at roughly 67 and a half miles an hour. There was a deafening splash. Then the world went dark and was filled with tiny bubbles and surprised looking fish. Seconds later, the log bobbed up again and with them clinging to it, gasping for air. The foaming white water carried them downstream 
round the bend and out of sight. Back on the riverbank, Crack raised his spear and with a howl of rage broke it over his he the head of the nearest soldier. Strugga! His men looked shocked. That was a very rude word. 